All right. Uh, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. It is Friday morning, September the 29th, 2023, and Chag Sameach tonight is the first night of Sukkot. And uh, so actually, it works out pretty nicely. Today's, uh, as we're finishing up Philippians, um, the title of uh, our daily mandate today is In All of Our Lack, He is Our Supply, which is a really appropriate message that goes in line with, uh, with Sukkot, with the message of Sukkot. Of that the Lord is the one who is our supply. And um, so let's pick up uh, Philippians chapter 4. We're going to finish uh, the book of Philippians today. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and, my, uh, and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my loved ones. I urge you, Odia and Syntyche, to be in harmony in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, true companion, to help these women They labored side by side with me in spreading the good news together with Clement also and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all people. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. In the shalom of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Messiah Yeshua. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just or righteous, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely or whatever is toward love, whatever is commendable, if there's any virtue and if there's anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. What you've learned and received and heard and seen in me, Put these things into practice, or these things do, he says, and the God of Shalom will be with you. He says, I can tell you this. As he's saying all of this, he's in a prison cell and saying, let me tell you about the the peace that passes understanding. Don't be anxious. Don't worry. Set your mind on things above. Set your mindset there, and the God, do what I've taught you and what I'm demonstrating to you, the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last you've revived your concern for me, though you were concerned before but lacked the opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I'm in need for whatever circumstance I'm in. I have learned to be content, right? Because I rejoice greatly, not because I'm in need, uh, not because, oh, now I can eat. My joy is not rooted in the circumstances like that. He says that whatever circumstances in, I've learned to be, this is sufficient. I've learned to be, this is enough. I know what it is to live with humble means, and I know what it is to live in abundance or prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of, this is enough, of contentment. Both to be filled and to go hungry, to have abundance and to suffer lack or need. I can do all things through Messiah who strengthens me. He says, I, all things I am mighty to do through him who enables me or empowers me. Nevertheless, what you've done is beautiful, he says. You, be, you, it's a beautiful thing that you've done to share in my trouble, to fellowship in my trouble. That's what I'm rejoicing about, right? You're partaking with me in my trouble, that your heart is with me, that your heart is selfless in, in, in putting my even needs above your own. He says, now you Philippians also know that in the beginning of the good news when I left Macedonia, not a single community partnered with me in giving and receiving, except you alone. For even in Thessaloniki, you sent something for my need more than once. Not that I'm I'm not looking for a gift. That's not what I'm after here. I'm after the focus is on the fruit that overflows to your credit. Right? So his ultimate concern is for them. He's not worried about the gift. It's about them. It's about their spiritual health, not their, not, it's, but, but he want, he does want to thank them and address their gift specifically. So here in verse 18 today, he mentions the gift directly. He doesn't hold back, right? He kind of piles up verbs here to indicate how this has met, generously met his physical needs. Verse 18, he says, I have received everything and have had and I'm abounding he says I have more than enough so here Paul who knows how to live humbly 
who knows how to be abased and to abound. He knows how to have, live humbly and to abound. Has experienced both in this present situation, in his current imprisonment. Right? He's got the, just the humbling of being in the imprisonment. And now, at least from their gift, just there's an abounding, abounding, and he acknowledges it. So he's learned to be content in all situations, to be this is enough through Messiah who empowers him. And he can say in acknowledgement of their generosity, I, I have all things, I have more than enough, I have everything I need. And so he, then he continues, he kind of doubles up on this expression of gratitude. He says, continues, I've received everything and have more than enough. I am amply supplied. I am filled up, fulfilled, having received from Epaphroditus uh, what you sent. Right? I've received, we, we, Epaphroditus was mentioned in chapter 2. Remember he said in uh, Philippians 2.25, Epaphroditus, my brother and co-worker and fellow soldier, as well as your messenger and aid to my need. Continued in verse 30, saying, because he came close to death for the work of Messiah, risking his life in order to fulfill, to make up, but is to fill, accomplish what was lacking in your service to me. Again, that the language there can sound negative in our hearing. Uh, the closing of this verse is not negative. Uh, he's basically saying he's made up for what was lacking, which, which is your... Pr- has to do with their presence, is in a sense of your absence. By the lack of their not being there, they couldn't minister to his needs as they would have liked, but they've sent Epaphroditus as aid to him as a helper, and that's been done so on their behalf. So in chapter 2, Paul spoke of what Epaphroditus did on their behalf, and he used the language, speaking of it, as their service, their liturgus, a liturgy, as it were. And he used, it's the language in the Greek of, of priestly service. So what he did, and he says, on, in the la, or what was lacking in your liturgos, your service, your, this priestly service to me. Um, that's, that's the imagery that what, what, what um, Epaphroditus was doing was, was priestly on their behalf. So he says, okay, I've received everything and have more than enough. I am amply supplied, receiving from Epa- having received from Epaphroditus what you sent. And here he describes it. A fragrant aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. He said, the, what you've done for me was beautiful. And it was beautiful. And while it was sent to me, I, I get you sent it to me. This was unto the Lord. It was, the, this, this blessed the Lord. It was received by the Lord. It was, an aroma, it was worship unto the Lord. It says, it was an aroma, a fragrance of sweetness in the nostrils of the Lord. And so this, this picture, the picture of the aroma of the sacrificial fire kind of wafting heavenward of the, from the, the fire from the burnt offering. That's the, that's the imagery here. It's this acceptable, it's, acceptable offering, pleasing to the Lord, bringing, it, 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 it delights the Lord, right? And so, so Paul says that's, this gift in the, from the Lord's perspective has been like an act, it's been an act of worship, it's been, it's been a, a, a burnt offering, right? And what, please, what pleases the Lord, it's, it's not about the act of giving. We've seen We've seen throughout, in terms of the giving itself, right? So when we looked at the sacrificial system, at many points uh, through the, what the prophets have written, the Lord says, I have enough of your burnt offerings. I don't need them, right? I have the cattle on a thousand hills. I don't, I don't do you think I, that's what I need? He says, you know, enough of all of this. A broken spirit, a contrite heart is what he wants. If it were burnt offerings, David says, I would offer them to you. That's not what you want. The, 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 the gift itself has never been the, 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 the issue. It's the heart of the gift. It's always been the, the heart that the gift was expressing. And so this act of sending this gift sacrificially, and all that it involved, is an outward expression of an inward condition. That really all, that's 
what all of these things were always intended to be. An outward manifestation of an inward condition. That's why, you know, obedience is better than sacrifice. Um, so, and we see in the New Covenant Scriptures where different acts of worship are equated to um, the different rituals, for lack of a better word, that are surrounded the worship uh, in the sacrificial system. So in Hebrews 11, uh, verses 15 and 16, it says, Through Yeshua, then, let us continually offer up to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips giving thanks to his name. For Do not neglect doing good and sharing, kononias, so it has to do with fellowship, but it has to do with a sharing. Uh, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Right, so the, the, you have this language of our, the fruit of our lips giving praise and, and doing good and sharing and giving of ourselves. This is what pleases the Lord as an offering unto him. Uh, and what, what makes Paul's words here in Philippians especially significant is that he used the same kind of language partic- in Ephesians chapter 5 uh, of Yeshua's sacrifice, um, Ephesians 5, 1 and 2, Therefore be imitators of God as dearly loved children and walk in love, just as Messiah also loved us and gave himself up for us as an offering and sacrifice to God for a fragrant aroma. So it's that that self-sacrifice, that laying down of self for the love of others. This is not love. Love is not that we loved God, but that he loved us, demonstrated in the love of Yeshua and gave his life for us. This is a fragrant aroma. This is what worship looks like. And so when you have him using this language where he's talking, so you have, because he takes kind of the, the incomparable character of Yeshua. Like there's no one like Yeshua to take the language that he uses to demonstrate what Yeshua did in his sacrifice, you know, to then tie that to this gift of is it, it, you know, he's been pointing us toward have this mind, which is in Messiah Yeshua here, giving in a sacrificial way, contributing out of material resource in the right heart from a place of sacrifice from a place of imitating the a willingness to give of oneself for the love of another sacrificially is worship and it's a fragrant aroma to the Lord. It's, it's the heart of that kind of giving that makes him smile, that is so pleasing to the Lord. So Paul says, that, I'm, look, I, I'm not looking for a gift. I, and the fact that the, your gift, I have it and it's resulted in I have an abundance but what, I, what I'm after is what the fruit that overflows against your divine account. And he says, that's exactly what's happened. That what you have done is a fragrant aroma in the nostrils of God, right? The, their, their gift pleased God, not because it met Paul's material needs per se, but because of the beauty of their generous hearts, because of the place from which it came. You know, you look at when Yeshua... We, we, the story of the widow's might, where she gave all she had. And so what, the, what her little bit could do compared to the one who gave much, but it was only a, a small fraction of what he had, this was more beautiful in the eyes of God. It's that sacrificial, that, that it's, it's something that expresses the heart of the, the, the giver that expresses that reflects the generous heart of God that's beautiful to him, that he loves. And so he goes on to, you've given this to the Lord. And I'm in prison. <laughs> I can't do anything. I like I can't have you over to dinner to thank you. Uh, but don't worry. Not that they're worried. But the Lord is going to take care of all that you lack. He says, verse 19, my God will fulfill Like the Lord received this and he's going to act on my behalf, on behalf of what's happened here. My God will fulfill every need of yours, every lack, everything lacking, every difficulty according to the riches of his glory in Messiah Yeshua. You know, friendship's a two-way street. 
And so when in, in relationship, in friendship, as much as possible, there's always giving and receiving, right? There's reciprocity. It's, oh, Paul can't give back. There's nothing he can do to reciprocate in kind, but that's okay because this has been done unto the Lord. That's why, by the way, when you do ministry, it's not what we do when we serve, it's to be unto the Lord. It's unto the Lord so that you don't end up waiting for someone else to return in payment or whatever. This is unto you, Lord. This is for you. And so I don't have to get resentment if it does nothing like that. This is unto the Lord. And so I know that he will receive it, that he knows my heart, that he knows your, this is, that's why Paul said, we looked at some passages yesterday where he says, he says, look, my conscience is clear. Or he says, look, God is my witness. He knows my heart. The Lord sees their heart and he says, oh, he will supply all your riches, all that you lack. He's going to fill it to the full. And, and what they lack in ways that it doesn't just have to do with finance or material needs. Sure, they it can be referring to their material needs. But but he's gonna they in all the different areas where they may lack, he says, My God, you can be confident my God will fulfill those things. You can know that God will take care of it. And he's gonna fulfill it. He's gonna fulfill all that you lack from the storehouse of of his glorious riches in Messiah Yeshua, right? So it'd be like, from a material point of view, if it turned out that you gave to someone and they're related to a multi-billionaire and the, and, and, uh, and the person you gave to says, so I can't pay you back, but this really meant so much to my benefactor over here, This, and he's going to, supply everything for you out of the riches of his bank account and you're like oh my goodness who knows yeah. he says my god will supply all your needs according to the riches of his glory in messiah yeshua like this is from an account this is from a storehouse that is so full and so deep that he will fulfill it all and this look this is what the lord you can't out like when the Lord sees the beauty of generosity, you don't give so that it will come back to you, but as you give, you can be assured that he will take care of all of your needs. It's a place of trust. In, in Malachi, a famous passage, we know where the Lord says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. Then there will be food in my house. And test me in this, says Adonai Tzavod, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out blessing for you until no one is without enough. I will rebuke the devouring pest for you, so it will not destroy the fruit of your land, nor will your vine be barren in the field. All the nations will call you blessed, for you will be a land of delight, says Adonai Tzavot. The Lord says, trust me in this. I'm going to take care of everything. What I want to produce in you is that you would be a heart that doesn't feel like you have to hoard. You don't have to live from a place of lack. In any, but to be generous unto the Lord. And when he, and so Paul says, I know, I know that my God will supply from his storehouse, from the riches of his glory in Messiah Yeshua for whatever you lack. So yeah, God will supply your material needs, but also in the present suffering that you're in the face of opposition, he'll richly supply what's needed. He will supply you with the steadiness, with the joy, with the encouragement in the, in your in the need, in the lack to advance in the faith with one, with unity, with mindset in the, of Messiah Yeshua, God will richly supply the grace and the humility necessary for it. In the place of both the grumbling and the anxiety, he says, don't grumble, be anxious for nothing. God will present, he will satisfy them as the God of peace. My God will act in your, on your behalf by fulfilling all of your needs according to his riches. If I was paying you out of my bank account, I don't have much. But out of his account, the riches of his glory and Messiah Yeshua are much more than material. And there are, and, and so as he considers these things, and we'll kind of close with this, is he, he kind of launches into praise. He says, 
to our God and Father be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Just the consideration of that. He launches into the doxology at the end. Be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And he just it ends with that point of praise and then gives these final greetings. Greet all the saints in Messiah Yeshua. The brethren who are, who, excuse me, brethren who are with me greet you. So he's, see, there are believers there. He says, all the saints greet you, especially those of Caesar's household, right? So that's a, what a, how did that have to hit? Here, you know, here the, the saints in Philippi are suffering at the hands of Roman citizens loyal to Caesar. Paul is an actual prisoner of Caesar. But in making him a prisoner at the, in the heart of the empire, Rome has brought, in, has brought him into their midst. He's, he's, uh, he's inside, within the very walls of the emperors. The, the gospel has reached into his household. Right? Actually, what the Lord is doing has turned out for good. The, the believers in Caesar's, especially those in Caesar's household, greet you. Right? So now there are disciples of Messiah, of, of Yeshua, among the members of the imperial household. Uh, and so who are in unity in their struggle against, to say, to say it's Yeshua that is Lord and Savior. So there's this closing word of encouragement and excitement. Hey, God is doing something. And then he says, so the grace of the Lord, verse 23, Yeshua the Messiah, be with your spirit. His power, his empowering grace, be with your spirit. Be strengthened in spirit. Right? Don't be discouraged. May he be with, with your spirit. You can rejoice you can rejoice in the midst of the suffering. You can rejoice and not be anxious because the Lord is at work and he'll supply all that you need. Amen? Amen. All right, well, that's we have concluded the book of Philippians. And uh, in all of our lack, he is our supply. Amen? All right, let me say good morning to everybody. Uh, good morning and Shabbat Shalom uh, to, uh, to Kathleen. And good morning to Jerry and Janet uh, and to Dayspring and Rachel and to Kelly and Melody Woods and to Kelly Kenfield and to Barbara Eaker and Barbara Callahan and to Elizabeth and Jesse and uh, to Pastor and Sister Martinez and to the Eddies, to Lauren and Mike and David and Levi and Valor and Haven and Everett and Pat and Lori and Ron and Amy, uh, to Sonia and Margarita and Sonia Tkach and to Eileen, uh, to Joshua Tina and Deborah, uh, Joyce and Joe, and uh, Jason and Sharon and Jeannie, and uh, to Misty, good morning, and to my sister Maria. I love you, sis. All right. Well, Shabbat Shalom, Chag Sameach. Tonight's the first night of uh, Sukkot. So rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord during this season of our rejoicing. And we'll see you tomorrow for our Shabbat service at 1030. Uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom, shalom. Have a beautiful day. I'm going to lift up